Good morning. I want to welcome you to um, this meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals for January the 9th, 2020. Our first order of business is to approve our minutes from September. Long way back, guys. Second. All in favor? All right, moving on. Next order of business. ZV. Oh, oh, by, by the way, for, for the record, we're going to move our election of officers to the next meeting because Ms. Keller's not here. Okay, ZV 4220, 195 and 255 Scranton Connector. Consider a request for a variance from Section 611 Off Street Parking Requirements, Glen County Zoning Ordinance. The subject site is currently zoned Planned Development Shopping, case number GC 3587. The applicant is seeking to develop a 166 unit apartment complex and has applied to rezone the site to high residential. The applicant is seeking a variance to reduce the number of required parking spaces from 332 to 302. Partial num number 03-12470, 5.4 acres and a portion of parcel, parcel number 03-1567, 1 1.17 acres. Zachary B. Harris, agent for Ambling Glen 1 LLC applicant and GP Mall LLC and Synovus Bank, formerly the Coastal Bank of Georgia owners. Mr. Postal. Yeah. Good morning, Maurice Postal, Flynn County Planning and Zoning. Uh, as you stated, the applicant's currently applying for a rezoning from a Glen Place Mall PD to high residential zoning in order to develop a four-story single building, 166 unit apartment complex. Uh, the MPC did recommend approval to the board at, its, uh, at the meeting on Tuesday night and the BOC will hear the application on February 6th. Uh, there will be a total of 61 one-bedroom units, 89 two-bedroom units, and 16 three-bedroom units and that adds up to a total of 287 bedrooms in the overall complex. Uh, section 611.6 .6 of the zoning ordinance requires that a multifamily project have two parking spaces for every apartment, regardless of the number of the bedrooms in the individual apartments. And zoning ordinance also requires the same thing for single family homes, duplexes, townhomes, and even mobile homes to have two spaces per dwelling, regardless of the number of bedrooms. And uh, under the zoning ordinance, the total number of required parking spaces for this project uh, is 332 spaces. And here's the uh, layout plan submitted by the applicant. And this layout plan does depict the 302 space that they're asking for instead of the required 332. This is the mall down here. This is Synovus Bank. And this is Scranton Connector. And as mentioned, their variance request is to bring the total number of spaces down to 302 from 332. That's a total reduction of 9%. Uh, those 302 spaces would mean 1.82 parking spaces for each of the 166 apartments or 1.05 spaces for each of the 287 bedrooms in the complex. And the applicant has stated that they believe that the zoning ordinances parking requirements for multifamily uses do not adequ <coughs> adequately reflect the actual number of parking spaces that are needed in an apartment complex when you have such a different mix of bedroom types. <coughs> and since... Uh, since this staff report was sent out to you, uh, the applicant has signed a parking agreement with the mall for the mall to provide 400 parking spaces in the northeast, northeastern section of the, the mall's parking lot. And this parking lot will be, avail will be available for renewal on an annual basis, or it can be canceled by either party with 60 days notice. So here's the site right here. This is where the apartment complex is gonna be, and this is the parking area subject to uh, the parking agreement. And here's an aerial. This is the site as it stands today, and this is where the extra parking will be. And this is Synovus Bank, of course. And uh, your possible motions are to approve, to allow the reduction from 332 to 302, approve with conditions, deny or postpone, and staff is recommending approval of the variance from 332 to 302 parking spaces. I was at the meeting the other night. I've, I've already been through this. I don't know if anyone else has questions. Well, 
I got one. Um, does this does this mean that uh, we should amend the zoning requirements for parking for uh, apartment complexes? <clears throat> well, as you know, we are undergoing a zoning update, so that was definitely something that will be looked at. Because as, as I said, the two, it's two spaces for every kind of dwelling unit, regardless of type. I saw, I saw that, yeah. but I also see that y'all recommended to uh, uh, approve this. Right. Uh, approve this uh, appeal. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. My question is, um, where's the rental office for this complex? Uh, I don't know, but the applicant is here today. Okay. I'd like to... Okay. Uh, get an understanding where the where the rental office for this complex is going to be. Is it part of the the total complex? Yes, sir. Uh, as you come off of Scranton Connector, you'll see there's a the primary would, entrance. Would, would you please introduce yourself? I'm sorry, Kevin King with um, Ambling Glen One from yes, Sadasta. And as you, if you were to make that right hand turn at the diesel lane, you'll see there's a little island directly in front of the building in the leasing office, and the amenities are the first two floors in that horizontal or in that per the leg that's parallel to Scranton Connector. The reason I ask you that is um, if that complex moves from strictly residential to public use by virtue of the public coming in to the rental office, have you accounted for accessible parking spaces as part of that uh, either three, uh, have, have, you, have you considered accessible parking spaces? Yes, sir. As part of our the, the 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 next step, the site plan approval, and our engineers will address ADA and have handicapped spaces, and as well as spaces for the leasing. And, and that's part of the parking agreement with the mall, is who we're purchasing from, is um, to be able to share for for um, contractors, vendors, uh, employees of the property, and things. But we we've accommodated the residents and and potential tenants. So the 302 number that's being used for the bedroom concept yes, sir. isn't really, it strikes me, is that, is that really an accurate number then? Or there's, is that just a number that you're using arbitrarily on some reduction? Because it seems to me that that 302, we're talking about moving in the ordinance down to 302, and part of that 302, there's no discussion about how many of those 302 spots are going to be for just what everything you said uh, to include at least, uh, what is it, uh, 350? It's like six accessible spots with at least one van accessible if there's 300 spots there. Yes, sir. So that 302 doesn't sound accurate to me well, in terms of the spaces or there's just not enough or there's just not enough information that has been I, I think discussed yet. Conceptually, what we know is we've got... Um, 166 units with 288 bedrooms and it's as an urban infill project we've kind of maximized it and, and one of the reasons we're asking we feel comfortable asking for the variance because we don't we don't want to own a property that that has a parking deficit is um, the number of efficiencies and one bedrooms is very high it's 36 percent or 60 60 units is are one bedrooms and efficiencies and so when you look at that we're really we look at the number of efficiencies and the size of those units that, that they're pr predominantly going to have one, one, one resident, one car. And so we look at more at the bedroom count and say if there's 288 bedrooms, then we're parking 1.05 um, spaces per bedroom. So we've got an excess number of spaces if every bedroom had a car. Okay, I mean, I understand it's a numbers game. Um, so if I buy there, I'm, if I were to buy there, I'd, who's going to get that 0.85 parking space? I think that's just, an, I, to say 1.85 strikes me as I was looking at all this, and, and I'm not trying to be difficult, I'm just trying to understand the reality of the situation. Well, is that, I don't think there's any such thing. I mean, if my wife and I were to move in there and we get 1.85, what do we park? Oh, 0.85 no. of our car no, in sir. that parking space? No, if we, I, I, when we look at a sign in the spaces, Okay. and without the, if you were to not take, we do have the parking agreement, but if you, let's say you take the parking agreement away. Yes, sir. Because I didn't know about that when I was f kind of formulating this, this, this whole uh, form of uh, line of questioning just to get an understanding of it. Yes, sir. And so if you have the three bedrooms, yes, sir. let's just, let's take our worst case. We, okay. we have 16 three bedrooms that if each of those residents had a car. Yes, sir. Then in our calculations, the way we looked at that, that we would have three three spaces for the three bedrooms. We would have two spaces for the two bedrooms. When you get to our one bedrooms and efficiencies, 
we estimated 1.5 spaces per resident. So you'll have the, the residents with efficiencies. Let's say they're they're traveling nurses, they're um, they're with Fletzy or something. They aren't, they're only going to have one car. So our estimation is, and and the comfort level and asking for the the reduction is purely based on the number of one bedrooms and efficiencies, and it, it's and we've tried to to follow your ordinance or for the for the remaining ones that that request is we, we just don't see a, a high percentage of those one bedrooms having two cars based on what we think our tenant mix is going to be in the market study we had completed and okay my old and, and it all my the, my conceptual understanding or trying to understand the, the the concept of it with the parking spaces just came back to the accessible parking that's where it all started yes, for me now, and, and so. there, those those are not shown on this plan what would happen is as we move to the fully engineered plans from the concept plan then we, we, you're right we'd have to meet the the required number yes, of sir. spaces per percentage and already and thank distribute you distribute those i appreciate it uh, yes sir uh, you have an agreement with Glen Mall to use some of that parking spaces? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it possible that some of the residents are going to have to park there? We, again, we don't believe any of the residents would park there. We believe that employees of the property and or vendors and potentially guests of the residents may, may park there if we have a deficit. But I, I don't anticipate, based on a bedroom count again, that we'll have two cars per bedroom. So if we have 288 bedrooms, then we've already accommodated one car per bedroom plus a little bit of, of margin. So I, I don't I don't anticipate that. That's fine. Thank you. Yes, sir. I got one more question here. Uh, what do you anticipate the occupancy rate to be? Do you have an average of what these generally run these apartment complexes? I'd do love they to stay full. I'd or? love to be 100%. Um, well, of course you would. We're, we we're going to run our financial models at about 93% occupied. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any uh, any other questions? I make a motion to approve. No 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 no. This is a public hearing. So thank you. Right. Yes, sir. Anyone wishing to speak for? Would you please come forward, state your name? Okay. That being said, anyone speaking against, would you please come forward and state your name? Jeff Kilgore. Um, I've been before this body before with a the strongest request I can make that you follow your existing law. And um, in my business, if you charge somebody a late fee for a late payment, the first time you forgive that late payment, then you no longer have a policy. If you're in the retail business and you have a price point for your product and you discount it for one person, then suddenly you've got a new price structure. And, and you can't hold to your price anymore because when people ask you, you gave it to somebody else, why won't you give it to me? What are you gonna say? Efficiency apartments are likely to be young married couples uh, just starting out. Uh, one bedroom apartments certainly, conceivably, could be two people. I think to make an assumption that it's only one car is wrong. I'm not in the apartment business. Maybe they're right and I'm wrong. But I was young and married at a point in time, lived in a one bedroom apartment uh, when I first started out. Um, I just, uh, once again, am here to ask you to apply your ordinance and um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kilgore. Anyone else against? Okay, how about discussion? A question that I didn't ask. Um, could I ask it again? Yeah. John, would Which the gentleman, one? could I ask you another question, sir? What was the, what's the general reason? And if it was in here, I didn't, I, I didn't get it through reading it. Why the request to reduce, especially now that you have 
that all those parking spaces that you negotiated with Glen Place. Why why are you seeking to come down to three? Was it 332 to 306? 302, yes, sir. So you're looking to reduce 26 spots. What's going to what's what's that space become, or it's just not? If we doesn't go, fit. If we go back to the site plan, I mean, we we maximize the parking on the site, and while we and again, when if if you went out to the larger picture. This is an, an infill property that we do have several hundred parking spaces behind us that are not used. However, we're not purchasing that land. So we, because we're not purchasing it, we can have a parking agreement, but I still have to ask, the way I understand it is, because I don't own those spaces, I still have to ask for the variance even though I have a parking agreement with them because they're not, they're not deeded spaces to me. They're accessible, they're available to me but they're technically not within the, the, the okay. perimeter of the site itself. So while you've had the big boxes, and, and the reality is, I mean, this whole plan was generated by discussions with the mall. And when you look at how retail has changed and, and we're trying to create a walkable, you know, relationship with them to be able to help those stores, all the, the commercial spaces and the restaurants that are going dark by putting greater residential density near them. So we have a great relationship and and that's why they've agreed to the parking agreement but Maurice or Zach can help me but because it's not within my deeded boundary I technically don't have the required spaces on my property I'm sorry For us, it, it's the, the it's the reality of the shape of the parcel and and the location uh, that we are bounded by. I mean, it's just we're taking up the undeveloped space right there. I wouldn't say that because under density, I'm I'm staying under that. So it's it's just how it, how it configures, um, and, and that's why we we made the request. It, uh, for us, it's the shape of the lot, and it's, and it, and it is the number of one bedrooms that we have, which is, if you look at other apartment complexes, it, it, I would say it's abnormal, out, outside of a, a larger metropolitan area to have this amount of efficiencies in one bedrooms, and that's what that's what that's why we're comfortable. I'm, I'm not going to ask you for a variance that I think is going to impede the success of our project, and so we feel comfortable. Uh, based on the, the number of efficiencies and ones to ask for it. Will the uh, parking places be assigned to the units at the parking place assigned to? The, the answer is it, it goes back to, well, we have some some garages, so those will obviously be assigned because those will be leased, and the others we can, we, I, I just haven't gotten that far if, if I'm going to prescribe them or not. The garages, uh, the garages are they, uh, anybody, are those separate? they come with a unit or is that something that you would lease separately they would lease them separately so anybody no matter what size apartment you had could have a garage yes sir okay and if you uh had the garage could you feasibly just use that garage for storage and put park your car it would be their assigned parking space so they they wouldn't have another an, another opportunity okay A couple of comments. Um, uh, my name is Zachary Harris. I'm the agent uh, for the applicant. Uh, uh, and thank you for your time today. I, I did want to address some questions that, that the panel had as well as a, a public comment. Um, every project, every development project in this county um, and anywhere, frankly, it's sort of axiomatic. You have to balance uh, your expenditures, your project design, with the resources you have available and the site characteristics. And this site, the overarching concept is to place uh, residents uh, in a multifamily unit, multifamily development in an area that desperately needs higher uh, consumer and higher consumer trips. And the overall concept is to provide a location that's going to enhance pedestrian access to the mall commercial area, the surrounding retail and restaurants, the movie theater, shops nearby. Uh, this particular project is, uh, the design you see before you has, has had countless hours put into it by 
engineering and site design professionals with Ambling Companies and uh, Ambling Glen One, and that company has a long track record of providing multifamily housing. And, and these calculations that you have in your packet are based on uh, many projects that they have completed and they've run these calculations with and these are projects that they've remained involved in uh, in many instances. So they are able to see uh, the long-term trajectory of what their design uh, results in for the quality of the life of the residents there. Uh, and these ratios are, are defensible uh, and to your concern about you know, well, do they account for um, sort of day use of the, the rental property and, and in the build out, the, the calculations are, are, are pinned to bedrooms and units. Uh, but again, you're talking about uh, a housing development where people will leave during the daytime and the people who come for the retail uh, or for the leasing office are there for just maybe a couple of hours at most while they fill out an application or take a tour and then they're gone. So you're not talking about a, a long-term um, daytime parking demand uh, for visitors to the property using the leasing office. And to allay any concerns about sort of the, you know, externalizing uh, the demand of parking to just let residents figure it out on their own, um, you know, again, based on their track record, um, the engineering professionals that, are, that have worked hand in hand with Ambling in designing this project uh, ran these numbers based on their experience. And to backstop that, to lay any doubts, uh, they were able to negotiate the parking agreement with the mall owners. It's conceived as a long-term parking agreement. It automatically renews every year. It's not an affirmative step that has to be taken. Uh, so it rolls over unless something circumstances change that require, uh, based on the party's um, goals, to, to terminate it. And, and there's no, you know, it, there's no indication that it is going to be terminated within the foreseeable future. Uh, to the public commenter's concern, uh, we are following the ordinance. The ordinances for Glen County contemplate that you have these very conservative parking ratios that are intended to, you know, it's a blanket number that'll capture every, every potential uh, contingency. And the ordinance also provide that in unique circumstances, this panel has the authority to take those circumstances into consideration and look at uh, data before it and issue variances as you've done in, in many situations and recently with the chapel uh, where parking agreements were part of the consideration for uh, an on-site otherwise deficient parking number for that project and and we use that as a as a model frankly uh, in proposing this project so uh, we feel that on-site parking at the number uh, we are proposing will be adequate for a, a satisfactory quality of life uh, for the residents there, for the public use of day trips uh, coming into the property, but to backstop any concerns, there is a, a parking agreement in place and we are following the ordinance and coming before you and asking for your uh, consideration in issuing this, this variance. And so we would again ask for your favorable consideration. Thank you. Well, are you up there? So, so roughly like half of the uh, single bedroom units will have two places. I beg your pardon? Roughly half of the single bedroom units will have two places. Is that uh, my understanding? I, yes. Is that right? That's my understanding. Okay. I have a question. Thanks for explaining that. And you um, discussed without me asking initially about the, um, the, the parking plan. Right. Um, so if I understood it correctly, uh, the parking, there's a parking agreement in place, automatic, automatic renewal. Annually, yes. Annually, 60 day, either way. Yeah, I mean, 60, 60 day, day termination, notice, termination one way or the other. Something happens, it, it, okay. there's a minimum two months that uh, uh, Ambling uh, Glen One would have to, uh, to if, if, if they needed a, a, a variant, if the variance was not issued, obviously that would severely complicate the, the site planning uh, and and as I stated earlier, the balance that is being struck here is to provide a quality development for the residents that fits with the area, that looks nice, uh, that man properly manages stormwater. You see 
uh, well, from here you probably can't see it, but you might be able to see in your packet, you know, you have a, a retention pond uh, bordering the Sonovas uh, Bank building or um, Coastal Bank of Georgia building. Yeah. And then you have also some retention areas close to the Mall Boulevard uh, for storm water. And there's also, um, you know, some, some offsite management through easements as well that are contemplated. But uh, obviously if we don't have an onsite variance, then, you know, there is, I, I personally don't know because I'm not an engineer, but there is going to be some level of redesign of the project. And we feel that this proposal adequately balances the public needs, the, the, the goals of the project, and the end quality of life for the residents there. Uh, you don't have to talk me into that. I really, I, re I appreciate it, and it's, it sounds exciting, and in terms of what's being done for our county in that area. Um, the question goes back for me is, because the parking is so important, it would seem to me, if I were um, managing, owning the complex, just as a question, and if this isn't for this purview, then that's fine. Um, why wasn't like a, the parking agreement like a lease for like 10 years to have some kind of stability? It strikes me that I don't know, all of a sudden somebody comes in and gives them 60 day notice and said, <laughs> we want to terminate for whatever reason. I don't know, I don't know the, the particulars of, of the contractual agreement. It right. just struck me that for such an important complex and for the money being put in and, and everything else, why, why there would not have been some lease agreement for multiple years uh, instead of just an automatic rollover, but an opt-out plan at 60 days either way. Right, well, it, I mean, it, the brass tax of it is it boils down to you know, business negotiations between the entities. So, okay. yeah. Um, and, and there are, uh, there are uh, encumbrances on sort of the general mall property, uh, easements for stormwater runoff and things of that nature that could, um, you know, we did consider that, we did look at that, uh, but those, those types of instruments, um, a, a lease would have gotten a little complicated, not that it was impossible, but it's, um, you know, balancing sort of the real property uh, interests in the general mall area uh, with the sort of the business efficiencies of the negotiation. Uh, this was the agreement that the parties resolved uh, to enter into, uh, and it's a good agreement. It provides over 400 parking spots. Um, and again, it's, uh, you know, this time next year it will be in place. After that, you know, it automatically renews. So, uh, yeah, your concern, uh, your concern's a valid one. I, I would just, you know, I would just ask that, you know, you consider the, the goals of the project here are, are beneficial to the mall uh, as well as, as well as the applicant, so. Mr. Harris, at the Mainland Planning Commission meeting the other night, there was a representative from the mall there. Right. And they were 100% behind this and they saw no reason to take the parking away from you. Right. Yeah, it was, I, you know, there are, there are business considerations that, that, that went into the negotiation, but this is a beneficial project for the mall owners. They're behind it um, and they're, I, you know, I, it would not be in their interest to, to essentially, you know, pull the rug out from under anybody with this parking agreement, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, I call, can you put motions up for me, Maurice, please? All right, can I get a motion, gentlemen? Go ahead. I move to approve. I move to approve ZV4220 to allow for reduction in the number of required parking spaces from 332 to 302 for proposed 166 unit multifamily residential development on the site. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, moving on. ZV 4225 100 Peachtree Street. Consider a request for a variance to Glen County Zoning Ordinance 701 to allow an encroachment into the side yard setback. The property is zoned R6 and then located at 100 Peachtree Street, St. Simons Island, parcel ID 04-02594. Johnny and Stephanie Wynn, owners and applicants. Good morning, Eli Zarka, Planning Eli? and Zoning. 
So as you stated, this is a variance to a side yard setback. Um, they are currently in the process of building a detached garage and doing an addition and remodel to the existing house. The two permit numbers for those building permits are RBUI 92272 and RAB 92274. Um, the site plan was drawn by the applicant and showed the garage being built seven feet from the property line as is the required setback in the R6 zoning district. And at the time of the setback inspection, a survey was done that showed the detached garage as being 6.8 feet from the property line. Um, the community development part department did originally uh, issue the building permit based on the submitted plans and the, um, the fault was found after the plans had been issued and after construction had started. This, was, uh, this is the survey that was done after um, the setback inspection was found to be close uh, to the property line. The detached garage is the building at the rear of the property shown by the arrow. This is a zoom in where it says 6.8 feet from the northern property line there. Um, the picture on the right shows the property as, uh, shows the front of the property and the width of the property because this is something that the applicant brought forward uh, after the packet had gone out. This is the property, uh, this is the survey done by Shoop Surveying just uh, recently. And the contractor was working on this survey done by Blitzkoff and Associates in 1985. And the property is shown as being an even 50 feet wide. And the survey done by Shoop Surveying showed the property is 49.8 feet wide. So the 85 survey is what they were working off of? Yes. And uh, according to that survey, they would meet their setback. You know, uh, this, this, this comes before us a good bit, Maurice, and this is maybe for community development, but you know, if, if, somebody, if I had this survey, I would want to be correct, you know, but maybe now before anything's done, we should ask for a survey to know where we are. I mean, that, that's just my two cents worth. Um, I, I'm, I, I don't know if y'all got questions for Maurice. Eli, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eli. Okay, how about the uh, applicant? Can you come up and state your name, please, sir? Johnny Wynn. Okay, I need you to state what you want. Just tell yes, me what we, you well, want. When, when we applied for the variance, as, as Eli said, I've always used this as a property marker of my, my property. I know where the concrete monuments are. We strung it, we pulled our lines and proceeded. And then, then after, we, after we learned that we would ultimately have to have a new survey done, uh, shoot now says that my property is 49.8 feet wide, which is two inches shy of the 50 feet that we've always known and worked off of. And his measurements come from the alley in, which through this property line, two inches off, and only affects actually the rear corner of my building. It's either the line's not exactly straight or the building's slightly off square of the line. So the back portion, according to, to that survey, shows me to be two inches inside the seven foot setback. <clears throat> On the back third. On the back third. Now, now what called for the second survey? Beg your pardon? What called for the second survey? The request from the county. Okay. Apparently when, you, when you're within 12 inches of the seven foot setback, then you, you have to have a survey done. Okay. So, so had this had you known had the survey been from prior, you'd be within. Correct. I mean, you wouldn't have. Correct. I, I, I understand. Correct. I, um, I failed to know that. Uh, I, I'm like you. If I had one that I thought was right, and then it turns out it's wrong, and you know, surveyors are humans like all of us. They can make mistakes. Of course. But it, but then it affects a bunch of things. So. Of course it does. Yes. Sir. Any questions for Mr. Wynn? 
<coughs> Sir, uh, just so I can understand that, I, I drove by there and I just want to make sure I, under, I was looking at what I thought I was looking at. Mm -hmm. um, when I take a left onto your street and I take a right and go down that little dirt road. That's correct. The alley. That alley, the alley. Mm -hmm. Down the back corner, that's your garage. That's correct. All right, the corner, the back corner closest to that alley is where you said they measured in from. They come in from the alley, and that's the corner. No, they, is it, that the setback the, issue? It would be the opposite corner, oh, not, the, not the alley corner. Oh, yes, sir. Not the not the property line between my property and the alley, but the property line between my property and the Warrail property, lot six and seven. Oh, on the other side. Yes, sir. Oh, so if I you're facing me from Peach Street Street, yes, sir. It would be my left yes, rear sir. corner. Yes, sir. But he did measure in from the alley, right? You said. Well, apparently they, apparently the concrete monument at the alley, they measure from that way okay. down downstream, um, or the way he explained it to me was that if 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 I had a 50 foot wide property, then the Warrells would lose property. So. Okay. No, and the reason I was asking when you said it came in from the alley because I looked at it and when I got out of the car, I said to myself, as I look <coughs> either way up that alley, I mean, there's so much erosion. <laughs> on the sides, yes, I couldn't even tell what the boundaries were of that alleyway. Yes, sir. If, if whose whose easement it was, whose right of way, and the erode, how much it had eroded into other people's properties. Right. And so I was just wondering how they even came up with that measurement, where you know, part of like I said, things had just been washed down, eroded away, and everything else. And I just wanted to make sure I was looking at what I thought I was yes, looking sir. at. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Yes. Any other questions? Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Yes. Sir. This is a public hearing. Um, anyone to speak, speaking for? Okay, that said, against. Please step up, state your name. Thank you. Uh, my name is Robert Brown. Um, I'm in the property on the other side of the alley. And your suggestion that some kind of survey, accurate survey, we can all use uh, is a very good suggestion. I was before you about three years ago on a very similar kind of issue. Um, there were two surveys in place. I was told that I'd lost 10 feet off the back of my property, and consequently I needed to have a variance for uh, some construction that we'd done to the house and a pool that we put in. So my first comment is nobody really knows what the boundaries of the alley are and what the right-of-ways are. There is a lot of erosion. There are multiple pins and concrete markers. Um, we were told in our variance hearing uh, that the such and such had been done and it was based on Demery Road and going back from Demery Road. We, like Johnny, had used a plat that we had. We could locate our pins based on that plat exactly back to where the alley was Based on that plat, we knew what the alley right-of-ways were. Turns out that was wrong, apparently. You granted the variance, and, and I appreciate that. But my first comment is, somebody needs to figure out where the alleyway is, if the county is gonna continue to maintain it. Johnny and I have both pursued and discussed with people the ideas of letting that alleyway go to those property owners to maintain and to use uh, as it is. I don't use the alleyway because my property is fenced. I come in from Demery, I park off of Demery. Um, but my property is structured such that I could use the alley because my driveway goes all the way through. Um, I don't have any problems with the setback. I do think the building is, um, does take away from the, proper, the value of my property. Uh, it's an immense building. Uh, it looks over into my uh, yard and my pool and my house and uh, I guess one of the things, and I'm, I can talk to Johnny, but if it didn't have that big picture window on the end of it looking directly into my area, um, I could be a lot more comfortable with it. Um, the, um, but I do think the issue is, and I sympathize with him because I ran through the same thing, I do think the issue is nobody adequately knows for sure where the alley is. And um, it, it, creates a, it creates these kinds of situations. Um, I, I wish his garage was a little further back, but again, I don't use the alley, so it's not as much an issue to me. And I certainly did not make a complaint. I'm here simply because I got a letter 
about it, and I wanted to see what the issues were. Um, I, I guess I'm not opposed to the variance. I'm very much in favor of somebody, and I don't know who that is. I'm assuming it's the county, as long as you maintain the alleyway. I'm certainly in favor of somebody definitively telling us where the alleyway is, because it's not there. I, we, we have to get a variance every time we do something, because nobody knows. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Does the county maintain the alley now? They do. Okay. And again, so more, more than likely, if, if my memory serves me correct, there's a sewer line that runs down that alley is, is you, why they won't abandon it. You're exactly right. There is a sewer line yep. and we were willing to say we would pave it, but we would understand that the pavement would be broken up if they had to service the sewer line, all of that. Um, it's not something that seems to be in the in the planning and I understand that. I, I think that has to go through engineering. That's not uh, even uh, our side, is it? No, I, uh, and I, I realize that. But, it, but the point is, nobody knows where, what is the alley and what isn't the alley. And it, it created a need for me to do a variance. It's creating a need for Johnny to do a variance. Um, I wish know, somebody you, would tell us where the alley is. You know, what, you know what I would suggest? All right. You get a hold of your commissioner on the island. Okay and maybe the at-large commissioners and ask them if they could maybe see about getting that item resolved. Okay. Because I, I don't think there, there's nothing we can do about no. it. I mean, you know, we're, what's before us is before us. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Ma I would just to let you know, he can, uh, I can get him my card and we can start that process to figure out what it would take for those commissioners to make that, give us that direction. Okay, thank you, Pat. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. But I'm not opposed to, I mean, we're talking inches. You, 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 you and Mr. Wing can work your window problems out. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else opposed? Come on, Jeff. Jeff Kilgore, um, as before, I'm here to ask you to enforce your ordinances. Um, we just witnessed an applicant do exactly what I predicted and used the chapel as a cudgel against you to tell you you'd done it before and so do it for me. Um, I didn't go into um, the ordinance with that applicant because I didn't really think it was necessary, but uh, apparently I, I was wrong. Um, but in the packet for this application, uh, it quotes section 105.3.1. For the staff to authorize upon appeal in specific cases so that the spirit of this ordinance shall be observed, public welfare, safety, security, and substantial justice done, such variances from the terms of this ordinance as will not be contrary to the public interest where owing special conditions, literal enforcement of the provisions of this ordinance will in an individual case result in unnecessary hardship. The next sentence says, no variance application will be accepted or processed unless the community development director or designee determines that it is reasonable, I presume that's supposed to be reasonably, determines that it is reasonably possible for the Board of Appeals to find that the application meets the terms subsections A, B, C, and D below. Um, the very first criteria is A, says there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property in question because of its size, shape, and topography. The earlier applicant, all they had to do was uh, eliminate one apartment building with 10 apartments and they got their 30 spaces. I don't know why y'all uh, couldn't see that and, and enforce the law the way it's written. Uh, there was no extraordinary circumstance. This criteria was not met in the first application. It's not met in this application. In, in this application, staff writes, the survey depicts the current configuration of the lot. You've got a map. You can see the lot. There was no hardship for this applicant when the design was done. B says such conditions are peculiar to the shape of property. Well, it's not peculiar. C, no variance may be permitted uh, as single family fine. D, 
the special conditions and circumstances do not result, do not result from the action or actions of the applicant. A self-imposed hardship. In your packet, it's documented that this applicant drew the site plan and submitted it. And, and so that criteria is clearly not met. Three of these criteria not met. The last one is E, relief if granted would not cause substantial, substantial detriment to the public good. Well, yes, it will, because you don't have a law. If every time somebody comes in here and asks for an uh, a variance and you grant it, you have no law. And, and the complaint about the alley, uh, the county can tell any applicant where the alley is and what the boundaries are. Section 106, in exercising the above powers, the Board of Appeals may, in conformity with the provisions of this ordinance, reverse or affirm wholly or partly or may modify the order, requirement, or decision of the building official or other administrative official to that end shall have all the powers of the officer, all the powers of the officer from whom the appeal is taken and may issue or direct the issuance of a permit. I suggest you print this and send it to Judge Roger Lane because he clearly doesn't know that that section of the ordinance is in there. Um, and Jeff, please stay on subject. I, I am, and I'm done. Um, and uh, if you won't enforce the law, um, then nobody in this county is going to. And, and so at some point, you need to draw the line, and you need to start enforcing the ordinance and say every time somebody comes in here with willy-nilly application, you're granted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kilgore. Discussion? Would you all... Uh, Pam, would you like to address any of that? Good morning, Chairman. Pamela Thompson, Director of Community Development. Um, this situation, the applicant was acting in good faith. He was using a survey that he believed to be accurate. And um, it's one of those situations where that discrepancy is in the width. If you start on one side of the property to pull your lines versus the other side is where you get that two inches. Um, we believe that the benefit of moving that entire structure two inches is not a, it does not make sense in this situation and that he acted in good faith. Uh, the concern that the back alley neighbor brought up about the size and the architecture of the structure in the picture window, even if that structure is moved two inches away, I think he'll still have those issues. Um, I don't think a two inch difference would uh, mitigate that. And I think he raised a good idea that he can just speak with Mr. Wynn about a potential mitigation to that um, curtains or something of that sort. So staff did feel comfortable that this was not a self-imposed hardship. He did use the survey that he believed to be accurate. Um, and we did uh, catch it. As soon as we catch it, he complied. He stopped construction, paid for the additional survey. And to the chairman's point earlier, we are looking in our zoning and subdivision ordinance rewrite about changing some of our requirements. And what we're having to do is balance the cost of additional requirements with the, the burden that places on a citizen. Um, he already had a paid for survey and you know there is a cost associated with that. We do have this happen, especially on the island, especially with older lots. And so it may be worth that cost moving forward, as Chairman Rafalski said, to impose that everyone has to have a brand new survey when they come to do work within certain footage of a, a, I, I think a it, property if it, line. If it's within a foot of where it should be, then, then a survey should be done. Yes, sir. And, and trust me, I know how much surveys are. I had one not long ago. Yes, sir. But, you know, I, I, I'm going to agree with you. He had a good faith survey. I mean, it was 19, I know the Blitzkoffs. I mean, it's like the neighbor said, something could have shifted. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. But I, I think everything was done in good faith. But I thank you for that. I think Mr. Kilgore makes some good points. However, 
Pamela, what would be the result if we rejected it? What would happen then? He, the, he, he would have to dig up his entire footings to shift the structure two inches. Uh-huh, okay. I would, or, I just, or he could just trim two inches off of yeah. everything if yeah. the architecture and the structural supports allowed for that. Mm -hmm. He could just shave two inches off, but a lot of times for this, they have to basically move the entire footings because your rebar and all the stuff you've set in the ground is in certain places mm -hmm. to make sure that you're stabilizing that entire structure when it's constructed. Hey, I've always been under the, um, under the assumption that if we deny, they still can go to the county commission. Yes, yeah, sir, they yeah, can. I can do that. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't do it that. It would go directly to the commission. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. okay. Any Thank more you. questions? No. Yeah, I got one. Uh, when you say you require a survey when the uh, when the corner or the building is, is within 12 inches of the setback line, even though you have a survey, a fresh survey, and they build it according to the, you know, the information they got off that survey, <laughs> if, the, if they set your uh, corner or your property line or your building line, against the uh, setback, you still need to verify that that's within the, you know, since it's within, you got that 12 inch rule, yeah. you still have to verify. Is there some, some way you can verify when they put the batter boards up or something that the... Uh, Yes, sir. This is before we actually implemented that now. We now have an additional inspection. We used to just do a footing inspection when you already had the rebar in and had it all formed up. We now do a setback inspection. At the batter board point or the... Yes, sir. Okay. Before it's poured. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any discussion? We're good. Okay. Can I get a motion, please? Uh, Uh, I move to approve ZV4225 to allow for the encroachment of a detached garage 0.2 inch into the required seven foot, seven yards setback. I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Mr. Wynn, you're, you're good, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Did you get that? Did, did you make it? Oh, 0 0.2 feet. Okay. Do we need to vote on that again? Let's uh, second and vote on it again. Just all right. Everybody in favor? Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. That being said, we're adjourned.